Hey there, everyone. I hope you're all doing good. Today we're going for a very weird setup, which will marry the extremely old and quite unknown CMU 800 from Roland and the quite new and quite futuristic, not old at all, T1 from Torso. Basically, I decided this should be a fun uh, way to uh, demo you the T1 that I have since uh, a bit. And uh, I mean, I've used this a lot on, with my computer, actually, which was with live. This is already started to get used to it. But with hardware, it's quite fun to have something that has uh, more than just one track. And this is quite the perfect example of a very retro way of doing Groovebox, it was probably the first ever groove box it was supposed to connect to a computer and uh, here i have a midi adapter that's hidden under the table there that allows me to control this via the t1 as a computer so i want first to choose a midi channel the drums are on midi channel 10 so i'm going to choose this the way this works is that you just add pulses it works in an euclidean fashion you see it adds Pulses. Right now we don't hear anything because we don't have any notes, correct notes anyway, selected. Okay, here, here we have a tom. Here we have a kick drum. Let's start with our kick drum. We have big background noise, but that's what happened with old stuff like this. We'll try to remove it later on. Okay, back home. Now what I'm going to do is to copy this. I see it's copied now here. All this, yeah, so it worked. No, that this is copied. I will ask him to be another note, which will be the snare. So now I have the snare at the same time, which I don't want, of course. I will divide the time of the snare by two compared to the kick drop, and I will change the pulse as well. On top of the pulse, we can change the placement of things. Let's go like this. So it's very easy to create beats with this thing. I like to copy actually the thing like I just did here because make it easier to make it easier to like uh, to keep the channels like you want them. This. this one, I will remove some steps from it. You can choose how many steps there is in a sequence. So with different steps, you can get different things. Let's copy this. Double press. This one, we have one more step one more pulse, and more divisions. Yeah, I a ton. Okay, now, more simple here. I want this to be channel 10. And I want this to be my closed hat. When you press bank, you go back to the main page. We we'll clear this, copy those hi hats here. Now divisions, a bit 
less pulses. And this is going to be the open hats. Yeah. Let me add some spring reverb to this from my mixer. So you see, it's quite easy to make beat with this thing. I haven't touched any of the randomness, basic rhythm things. And there's lots of things that we haven't touched because the rest are more made for um, melody and sequences. So let's now sequence the melody channel. The melody channel is channel one. We're going to ask it to be monophonic with the style. This style, basically this whole thing works with a Turing machine arpeggio weirdness that will generate stuff for you. You can actually write stuff, but I mean, it's not the main point of it. If you press control and style here, you have three monophonic style and three polyphonic ones. Let's start with the monophonic one as this is monophonic anyway. And I will just add some pulses. <laughs> I can choose a bunch of different pitches. And this will now alternate between those, depending on how you set all your timing, pace, repeats. Ranges, voicings, offsets, stuff. You can move around the speeches. So right now, I've done this quite hardcore, but let's say we go, we can choose a minor scale. So it will filter the results resulting notes. There's a harmony setting that we will see later for the polyphonic part. So, and one of the cool things in this is that there's a random. You choose how much of the randomness. And then when you press this and move anything, it will randomize it. Let's randomize our pitches. And when you release this, it's just a new random loop. Let's write a bass pattern, channel two. The bass on this is just like dead simple. Scale minor as well. This is the bass. So the same thing than before. Style, monophonic something. Now let's see what we can do. Let's randomize the pulses actually. And now on channel 9, we can access so minor, we can access the polyphonic parts. And this one is a full voice. Everything in this is analog. Can we hear, like, see we can hear it there.
Here we can choose one of the random repeats. Yeah. Perfect cheap tune groove box. One thing that's quite fun is the temp function. When you old temp, you can change whatever you want. And if you just release this, you'll go back to what you had before. Pretty cool, especially for. like drum feels and stuff like this. Okay, so let's say we like this pattern. We are on this pattern right now. If you double press something, it will skip like this. So let's delete this. I like this pattern. Now it's copied. We'll copy it there. So now I can load this one. Make changes. We'll basically slow everything down in this one. Except the melody maybe that will be... A few, just a few changes to give you a new set of things to work with. And we can, whenever you want, go back to the other ones. I think there is the 16 banks of 16 patterns. The other, the other that I have here were made for computer stuff. Probably be a bit messy here. <laughs> oh boy, this is a mess. There's also a lot of uh, velocity accent and stuff like this that are not very relevant here. Anyway. Okay, because the sound of this thing is very dry, I've routed two of the instruments to filters and more. I've used the CV out. I've mapped those channels to channel 15 and 16. And here I'm just using sequences of notes sent from the torso to control the CV of those two filters. So if I mute... It's muting the modulations. This one is here. Maybe have this one. It's interesting because you can mute your modulation as well.
Okay, so here, just for an example, I have made just another chord thing. And I will show you how to make a sequence that will be used at the CV out just to control the filter. So this is what we have so far. This track is going to be channel 15. We could have took this one because it's channel 15. Let's take this one. But we could take an any. Doesn't matter. As long as you start adding pulses, notice that the pitch have, has dropped. Because now, anytime it goes to any of this pulse, it will send that pitch information. But this is just voltage here. So let's go here and we will say that we want to span a few octaves. Maybe let's add a few more notes in that could be selected. I'm going to, because you can also add stuff like this. Let's choose a style that is monophonic. So it will scroll through all those different pitches. You can hear those steps now. You can decide to randomize. See, it works. You can decide to remove some pulses. Also, the envelope, internal envelope at play here. I could remove it. It was just to make the overall thing feel a bit more normal. Bear in mind that you can use any sequencer that sends out uh, notes as value to control anything. It doesn't have to be notes. This is good. This is, fast. <laughs> this is weird. I like it. Yeah, playing this guy with external filters is actually quite fun. 